Is it is it this tour or a little bit of bringing old memories back to your dreams, guys, as a paladin? Yeah, yeah. We've got everybody with us. Our tour manager, John Van Molken, and uh, the the agent um, Arnold Wagner, and it it's it's everybody. even the guy that rented us the van is the same guy. It was good. Every damn artist on the road. Yeah, yeah. same guy. This, uh, everything is the same. The van is yeah. the same van. All the amplifiers in that van are the same. Crazy. It's a time board back in, back in the... It is. Even it the was, hotel's the same yeah. this time. Yeah, we got back in the van and we went... Well, the audience... Yeah, we've been here before. <laughs> smell the same. <laughs> Just the audience has aged. <laughs> I was worried, yeah. And I think, man, five years off. Oh, DG getting old and then I look out but everybody's still here a lot of the same people and it's really nice everybody remembered and wanted to come out and see us play again so we're glad so we end this interview and this last question is the set list you're gonna play tonight um, how did you pick it together? Because you got a, lo a load of uh, numbers to pick on, and I know. did you give everybody five, and uh, that's it, or the best off? Oh, we just like when Thomas was talking about uh, when we rehearsed in Texas. We just kind of tried a bunch of stuff and picked a few and wrote down the ones we thought we could remember and ones that felt real good. And then some of them were playing, and some of them we we actually got some other ones. Now we're sliding a few it more was, back in. We might play a little more bluesy tonight since we're on a blues festival. It was. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> it was pretend going down to Big Mary's. Figuring out what we we're gonna play because. For the last 20 or 25 years, we never had a set list. He always just knew what to play. We, we just, always we just we never used a set and, list. And, no. and, uh, we're getting almost this where time we are. You know, we had to write it down. Just from so many uh, years playing together, we know what. We had what, to write it down on a piece of cardboard in the fence. It was really interesting because there was a song that we hadn't rehearsed, "Follow Your Heart," and Dave says he goes, "Hey man." People have been asking for this song, you want to try it? So we just played it at Soundcheck, and Dave goes, okay, we'll do that one tonight. And we opened the show with it. <laughs> and we never rehearsed it, and I hadn't played it in six years. And it just went really smooth, so. Yeah, you're musicians. It was a time warp because all of a sudden I look around and we're playing and we're back at the Paradiso and it was like, wow, it was like, did five years go by or is it like a dream? What do you hope for tonight? Same thing, a lot of, uh, a lot of good yeah. feelings and um, just going to be nice to get up there and sweat and rock out again, you know. It's really, this, is, this was the main festival, they invited us to come over and it just uh, worked out, like I said. You, you, know, got no, you, got no, you, you, you have to deliver now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try. We're gonna do our best, do the best we can. We, uh, but it, it just is cool, man. You know, like I said, Brian was over here last year. People were asking about it, and you know, I've gotten a lot of uh, emails and offers from agents and promoters. I just haven't had the time, and I've been on the run. You know, doing. You know, we worked hard in, in Paladins. We had how many? Eleven or twelve records we made. You know, every couple years we had a new record come out, and we toured non-stop, non-stop, and. Finally, I just needed a break from just going on tour so much, so I took a couple years off and I went down to Tucson and started the Hacienda Brothers, but we never planned to like tour. We just only were gonna like make a record and play a couple gigs here and there because Chris Gaffney was in a band and I was with the Paladins and next thing you know, Hacienda Brothers, four records in five years and touring the whole time. And I was like, man, I didn't exactly want to get that busy <laughs> with those guys. I mean, it was nice, 
and and but you know we did it for so many years i mean we we had one record called the million mile club that's because we mid 90s we, we we really we really drove that many miles together and that was then yeah that that was only miles on the grounds in the u.s doesn't even count oh, yeah. europe <laughs> We have a well. Your uh, your records are still played on our show because we we loved it and we've seen in Dawn Rose a lot. But we still have one um, I don't know a story to tell the audience, and that's um, about you. And it wasn't Dawn Rose, yeah, and there was a band playing in uh, ahead of you as as a, as a, an extra show, and you tuned your guitar with a pitchfork. And listened over if it was tuned while the other band was playing. How is your hearing? <laughs> it must be very, very good. Otherwise, you could everybody's going to use a simple machine to uh, tune his guitar. But the it's the first man I saw. Hey. Pitchfork worked really good for this band. Hey. Pitchfork worked really good for this band, and uh, I didn't bring it this time, and I wish I did. But the pitchfork, I, I just, I just like. He gave me my first pitchfork, and he said, "This is cool because the battery never wears out." <laughs> so I'm using it the whole time, and he, you know, he upright bass. There's no frets. He's got really nice intonation. So you know, if I'm a little out, he, 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 he knows where how to keep us in tune. Okay, but. Then when I get to the Hacienda Brothers, those guys said, hey, man, get rid of that pitchfork. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, we had, we had so many strings and so many frets in that band, and they, they were giving me a hard time. So Hank gave me that white tuner. He says, here, you better use this. Yeah. And I'll tell you another funny you story. with a steel guitar. It's and, tough. yeah, steel guitar and DB had perfect pitch, and then and Gaff did too. Gaff. Caffney had the best ear. He could sing perfectly in tune, and he was always looking over at me. Uh, uh. <laughs> and I remember just one of the last times I spoke with him on the phone before he passed away. And I finally got a new baritone guitar from Fender, the prototype I've been planning for 10 years, and even longer, because it was your original neck. And finally I talked to Gaff. He was really sick. I said, hey, Gaff, I finally got that baritone guitar from Fender. And he, he was so sick, and he says, well, is it in tune? Because <laughs> he knew. <laughs> so I'm trying to be as in tune as I can. But the pitchfork is good. Yeah, yeah it worked, worked fine. Really good. I wish I had it right now. 